So all, it's the third week of June, the 19th to be exact, 2019, and I thought while I was out here walking around checking the different plantings, I'd just take you along with me, do a little short walk about, see how things have uh, came out over the last week. We did get a lot of torrential uh, rain yesterday, and it actually started uh, raining at dusk on Monday evening. And it continued all off and on pretty hard through uh, yesterday. So let's take a look at things, see how things are faring. So we're going to start here, a little bed we planted out on Father's Day. And uh, what you'll notice is it appears that we've got some digging going on. And that's our lovely squirrels. Uh, not sure whether they're after grubs or nuts that they uh, buried over the winter. Goji plants really starting to so show some new growth now. Sweet basil looked like it fared well, as did the rosemary. Now, this is only Wednesday, so it's only been three days since we planted in the flower seed, and so far I don't see any of that germinating and I wouldn't anticipate seeing any but I do think we'll be seeing some of that come up start popping through the ground here in the next two three days so we'll take you over by the south side of the house take a quick look at that bed where we actually started working today this morning when I decided to get the camera and just do a quick walkabout and what we've got here, of course, is our sweet banana peppers. And uh, looking at them, see we finally got one banana pepper right there. But other than that, I don't see any. A lot of new green growth. Plants are looking good, but not a lot of peppers. So what I'll probably be doing this afternoon, late afternoon is I'll be adding some uh, potash around these plants and of course I make my own potash I take it from underneath the burn piles and I'll just dig that in around those pepper plants same here with this here cherry tomato which now is about nine feet tall we need to add a little bit more string there to support it what I did do today is I came out and started trimming some of these leaves off that had been yellowing, having little small brown patches on them. As you can see right here. Not sure what that is. It could be a tobacco mosaic virus. It could be early blight. Not sure. But the leaves will eventually succumb to it. We've got a pile of them here. Pretty much see what they look like. So I wanted to trim them all back off. And uh, right after the sun sets where it's not shining down on this bed, I will be treating this tomato plant with some hydrogen peroxide spray. And uh, I'll do another updated video on that. It worked really well for me last year. We'll be using it again this year. Over here's cow horn pepper. Here again, a lot of new green growth. But I have not seen a pepper or a blossom. So, considering we're only two days away from summer and I would think I would have some peppers, I'll be adding potash around uh, this pepper plant as well. Now the rest of the bed is still vacant. And uh, except for the irises there. Not sure why I even keep them, but they've been there ever since I've owned the place. So that's about it on this bed. We'll go over there and check out those uh, truck tire beds we made last week. See how they're doing. We actually uh, put a few other things in there, rearranged one of them from uh, when we did the video. We'll head on over there now. 
as you can see we've got two truck tire beds now now the first video I did shows planting out this first one here on the left and originally what I had in here was three of these Bonnie green bell peppers what I decided, since I had several other plants I need to place stick, I'd uh, rearrange this plant here over to the side. I'd add a fourth Bonnie Green Bell Pepper right here. I put in a little marigold planting in the center, hopefully to repel some insects. And then right here, these are cantaloupe. They happen to be a Super 45 cantaloupe from Bonnie and what we're going to do with them is we're going to let them grow out over this tire and we're going to let them grow down here which we'll be adding some uh, grass clipping and leaf mulch and we'll just let them grow around the tire over into here see how they do then what we have done as you can see is we've added in some irrigation we're using some soaker hose I do like soaker hose because for one reason it's made from recycled tires as well you gotta do something with all the millions of tires that we discard every year and then I've got it running up into a PVC pipe there the reason for this is because I didn't want to water the tires so this is dripping inside the pipe and it runs out both ends into the tires puts the water where I need it instead of where I don't now on this second one we did the next day after we planted the first one there on the left we put in this here lunchbox pepper it's looking nice we put in another bonnie green bell right here and another one right there we did the same thing put in a small planting of marigolds I had leftover Parks Improved Whopper tomato plant. It had been sitting over in the shade, starting to yellow. So I stuck it in as well. And lastly, I had one more grouping of that Bonnie Cantaloupe Super 45, so I put it over in the sidewall of this tire. Here again, I'm going to let it drape over. And then I'm just going to let it run across the fence. Now I'm just not going to let it grow in the weeds, folks. I'll lay some cardboard down. And I'll top the cardboard with some uh, grass clippings that I take as I mow the lawn. I use them a lot. Makes a nice bed. Cantaloupe seem to enjoy it. Don't get as much rot in that. So now we'll head on over here to the old uh, compost pile planting that we got. Got a few things coming up in that. A little bit more life going on than we have past weeks. I was a little bit concerned that my potatoes might not come up. I planted them late. Actually failed last year. But as you can see, they have broken through the ground. There's some more right there. Right there. Here. And I do think we have some more about to stick up through there. And along here I have some more and I believe they'll pop up through. And what we have here is of course the okra lining the perimeter of the bed. So, we got some life showing in this old compost bed plant. And if it all works out, we'll be harvesting some white potatoes, hopefully some red potatoes out of it, as well as uh, harvesting okra from it throughout the season. Just have to wait and see. And we still haven't done much 
with the old raised bed. Kale's starting to show some improvement. Though there has been a lot of caterpillar damage, I'm trying to keep them picked off. It's so every morning and afternoon process. And uh wish I had one to show you. But as best as I can tell, the caterpillar appears to be army worm caterpillars. It's awful early for army worms this year. Garlic chives and pot are doing fantastic. As are all the wild ones that are out in the yard. There's some right here. Some more right here. And you can see them all up through here. I try not to walk on them. They're all up through here. So there's no shortage of garlic chives here. We'll go up by the old clothesline pole plant. Take a look at it. As we go by, we look off here and where we've been doing our composting, leaf clippings and leaves and grass clippings that is. And if I wanted blackberries, well, I've got a good start. But they're all throughout this area. I don't know, maybe I'll leave them for now. Or I'll till them under when I get ready to uh, till under this there compost. Or what will soon be compost. So we're over here by the old clothesline pole. And you can see the cucumbers. Oh, they're about eight feet in climbing. And we've got Several little cucumbers in there. I believe we got a rather large one right there. Got another one here on the ground. There's more off in there. Oh, there's a nice one starting. I believe we'll have enough cucumbers for one little old man. I may plant another little small planting. I've got to plant my dinosaur cucumber somewhere. I haven't decided where yet. Now this park's improved whopper tomato plant starting to take back off. It was set back by the deer three times. It has really struggled from that third time to make a comeback. But it looks like it just might. It's all nice and green. Got a lot of new growth. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Over here on this side, of course, we've got the rattlesnake pole beans. And they're doing fine. They're loaded up with beans right now. I gotta come out this afternoon and pick them again. Back there a little bit. I left them a little bit longer than what I would have liked, but been rain so much the last couple of days. Now the one thing I'm seeing this year that I didn't have as much trouble with last year, you see how the leaves, they turn yellow and get this brown sort of mottled area. Here's another one here. I had that a little bit last year, but not much. I've had a lot more this year. This is how it sort of starts out. Best I can tell that's rust, bean rust in that I will be uh, clipping those leaves off as I normally do and I will be treating the beans once I pick them with some also some of that there hydrogen peroxide spray that I make up now this parks whopper improved whopper it's doing a fine job It's got tomatoes off in there. A lot of vigorous new growth. I'm pleased with this one. Maybe that other one will catch up. And as you can see, 
I gotta get a ladder out and pick the beans again. And of course, they're already back down here, grown down chest high. So I would say, if you were to measure the vine, it'd be 15, 16 feet. And they'll climb on down the ground. And we're gonna let them. So this area is doing really well. I did have a little bit of powdery mildew on the cucumbers. I trimmed off the leaves for now. That showed a little bit of sign of it. But if I see it start back, I'll treat the cucumber with the hydrogen peroxide spray as well. Now I use that hydrogen peroxide and water spray on my cucumbers last year for powdery mildew, my squash, summer squash, and my winter squash. Also used it on my beans for bean mosaic, bean rust, and I used it on my tomatoes for blight and what other ever type viruses I had. And it did a superior job. I can't recommend it enough. And I do hope you watch my videos on it. I'll link them on the end screen of uh, this video. Well, our summer squash over here, which is planted really late, it's starting to green up. Look like it might do something. It's got the flowers on it, but those are all male flowers so far. The okra there got beat down a little bit by the rain. This one here is looking okay. The Kentucky Wonder Beans, I'm just starting to see some tiny blossoms start to form. I think if you look, you'll be able to see one right on in, right there. Hasn't opened yet. Up until now, I haven't seen a blossom or a bean pod. Now, they've gotten that rust as well, but not to the extent that the rattlesnake pole beans got. So that may be a plus as we continue to grow these out throughout the season in uh, comparison to how the rattlesnake pole beans do. Now our last little planting, which is beans, of course. Yes, I guess I love beans. They're, they're so easy to put up. So many different ways. You can freeze them. You can can them. You can dry them and use the beans inside the pods as dry beans on almost every green bean variety. The cobra here taking off. A lot of new growth. They're climbing up to about four feet high now. They were put in several weeks after the rattlesnake and the Kentucky Wonders. The Blahildi, the German purple potted pole beans they're starting to catch up to the rattlesnake give you a little comparison there there's the cobra and there's the blahildi the bloody blahildi are starting to come along now i did add soaker hose to this bed any raised bed in the south dries out rapidly so if you're gonna have them not saying it's not a good idea you can just be aware they're gonna dry out so you are either gonna have to religiously hand water or you're gonna have to put in drip irrigation soaker hoses or something or they'll just burn up the other problem with any type of raised bed in the south is ants Fire ants, all types of ants. They love to build an elevated soil, so they'll definitely build in your raised bed. Everybody in the South has that problem. Hence why a lot of people in the South don't have raised beds because fire ants truly love them. And we've got some more marigolds right there that we've got to stick somewhere. So that's about it here, folks. 
just wanted to do a quick walk about of course i'm never quick because you know as i say i'm a southerner by choice uh talk a little slower do things a little slower i guess but life's here a little bit slower and that's not a bad thing an old fig tree or bush whichever you want to call it is just getting loaded up with figs and we're going to be enjoying them here in the coming weeks it's really come on strong this year and i will be enjoying me some fresh figs nothing like them and so far one thing i want to say about figs I have not had any pest problems over the last two years. So being that in the deep south, almost everything eats everything else. That's a huge benefit. As I'm about to walk in the house, I almost forgot to show you the blueberries. Now we picked these two days ago. And you can see Still plenty more ripening in there and plenty more to ripen. Got them hanging there. So, probably this afternoon. Probably one of the last things I do. But I'll be out picking these before I take it on in the house. Sorry, I almost forgot. I will say this. Anytime you can walk by your own berry plants, pick a nice plump blueberry, pop it in your mouth, that is a true treasure. I hope you think about putting in some edible landscaping on your place too. So there you have it. Just a quick walk about around the old place. We've got plenty to do today. I've got to do some more uh, pruning. Then I'm going to be um, adding in that potash, several of the plantings, mainly the peppers and tomatoes. I might put some in on those Kentucky Wonder Beans, since I've not seen a lot of blossoms there as well, as well as top dressed cobra and the Blahilde. Now, the rattlesnake pole beans, they're not having ever, any problem. Setting blossoms, they're just covered up. Of course, you saw all the beans on them. So for now, We'll have to say goodbye, and we'll be seeing you in the next video. Y'all take care, stay safe, and God bless. Goodbye for now. Come on, Tricks. Let's put the camera up, get on to work.